tonight this great man of God great God. if you can just just hold your applause for a moment if you can hold your applause for a moment I I said this great man of God and I want you to be clear that 
when I, when I go places and minister, especially in this, during this dimension of my life, I say what the Spirit of the Lord say. And I've gone places and I have said, I honor the man of God. But the Spirit of the Father said, great man of God. And what God calls great, we have to honor as such. Or we stand as an enmity, an enemy against God's word. I speak not of myself, I come to speak according to what my Father gives me. And he calls him great. And therefore I'm responsible that the response of what the Father has said is received in the way that the Father would have me to. And so when I say great man of God, everybody that can stand on your feet and put your hands together for this great man of God. pastors and bishops that are in this building to all of the ministers and the elders and the evangelists I honor you tonight with the honor of the Lord and I appreciate your sacrifice in ministry and let the people of God put your hands together for them all over the building you may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can thank you so much I am here and I believe that one of the reasons why the Lord has called this man of God a great man of God because I do know that during this time and this season and this walk of what God is speaking and what he is doing not only in my life, but in the lives of God's people all over the world, that there is a transition that is taking place. And those that are in the realm of the spirit can feel the changing of the guards. And those that are in the realm of the spirit will understand what the Father is calling us from and what he is calling us to. And I speak that in the most humbled way that I possibly can because I know now that I am invited into the presence of the company of God's people by divine appointment and not by invitation. I know that the appointment and the acceptance of it is by way of prayer for the invitation and prayer for the acceptance. And so when there is a divine connection in the building, there is something that God is going to do in the supernatural. There is something that he is going to impart in all of us. And we are headed to be changed, never to change back again. For the Lord in this hour, I don't believe that he is in the process of wasting the oil of the anointing. The price is too high. Amen. And maybe a few church people really won't understand what I am saying when I say that. But I was looking at, and in my time of prayer and just being careful about what God is saying and what he is doing and understanding that this is the final quest, the final quest and not according to the book, the final quest, according to the prophetic word that he has released in the spirit. And when pastor talked about a time of consecration and a time of meditation, and I say this really, Pastor, as humbly as I know how. When God began to 
take me on this last intense consecration. I met spirits that I had never seen before. And I'm not talking about where we say in our minds and in our hearts that we think, we think that when somebody says that I'm having spiritual warfare, we call that, war, that, that warfare somebody talking about me in the choir or somebody offending me in the lobby of the church or somebody doing something that will cause me not to want to be in the house of God. And so we, we have a tendency to label that word warfare to people. When there will come a time in our lives as we move and shift in the divine plan of God, right before we touch the encounter of truth, the encounter of truth about who we are and the purpose for which we were born and what we shall become and what we shall move into. And right before we get ready to embrace the divine will of God for our lives, and I'm not talking about the one that, that the church has shaped us to be. I'm not talking about the one where we practice becoming who God has called us to be. I'm talking about when you step over into the divine will of God and you are in the final stage of what God has intended for your life when you were conceived in your mother's womb, you will have an opportunity to root up, to meet Lucifer himself, to talk to the devil for yourself, to talk to the, to talk to the real enemy. Somebody said 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 the real enemy. You see, people, people's people, people, people have a tendency of not to, not to want to say the real enemy because they think the real enemy is people. But if you are in this building tonight, you're not in this building because a flyer drew you in here. You're not in this building because you heard it on the radio, the television. You're in this building because there is something great that God is about to do in your life. And therefore, your enemy cannot be a person because the magnitude of who you are in God is too big for one person to stop that. There is an onslaught of demons that have come against the divine plan of God, but the encounter of truth, encounter of truth. The encounter of truth. Somebody said encounter with truth. Somebody said encounter with truth. Great debaters, the great the great debate is going on now in the realm of the spirit even while I'm preaching. There's a debate going on in the spirit realm as to whether or not we would leave out of this convention and we would be just as we always have been or whether or not this would be the day and the time and the season that our souls would say yes to the Father. I wish I had somebody in here. I wish I had somebody in here that he said, he said the debate, the great debate is going on. The great, the great debate. The great debate. The great debate. The, great debate. the argument of Satan about all of us. The great debate. Hold up, Shanda. Somebody said, well, you don't know what I'm going through, but I'm here to tell you, you're not being attacked. You're being considered. Uh -huh. Jesus, looked, Jesus looked over at Lucifer and said, have you considered my servant Job? And the reason why God never classified it as an attack because of what he had put in the belly of Job. He knew that when he got finished the process, he was still going to walk in who God had called him to be. You are not you're being considered. Touch somebody and say, you're being considered. Stop complaining. You're being considered. Stop stop whining. You're being considered. Out of Oshanda, you're about to lose your praise over a trial when you're being considered. I'm not hearing nobody. Talk back to me. It's a privilege and an honor for God to consider you because when he loosed the devil on you, it's God saying, I trust and I have confidence in who I have called you to be. And uh, 
shere behete behana ma heaven and earth shall pass away but my my word shall forever stand 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 I don't care what's going on around you my word is standing in you it'll forever stand it'll forever stand even when you sit down it'll forever stand when you give up I'm not giving no talk back to me God is not afraid of you trying to give up because the Lord knows that my word shall forever stand it shall forever stand sit down sit down let me just let me just just what am I shall forever stand shall forever stand shall forever stand somebody said why do you keep saying that because what the Lord is trying to do he's trying to revive your prophecy he's trying to remind you of what he told you he's trying to tell you that no matter what you are doing right now I've already spoken the word over your life and I'm here to tell you that it's time to rejoice because my word shall forever stand and shall forever it shall understand. So the debate. So the debate takes place. So the debate takes place. And the reason why there is an opportunity the reason why there is an opportunity for Lucifer to have an audience with Jesus the Bible said that a that a that a liar won't tarry in the sight of God, then why would he give a lion spirit an opportunity to have an audience with him? How do you get how did you get an opportunity to have an audience? How, do, how does how does Lucifer get an opportunity to say anything to us? How does he how does he get the opportunity to speak anything to us? How does he how does he get the opportunity to do anything to us? Why does he get the opportunity to speak into our ears and in our mind and in our spirits? Why does he have permission to talk? The Bible said that after, after Jesus, and Luke the fourth chapter, after Jesus had ended the fast for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible said he hungered. He hungered, 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 he hungered. There is something very significant to the hunger of the flesh side of a God man. <laughs> because you get to the point where, where now the flesh has a need, the flesh has a need. You get to the point where he's psychologically worn out. You get to the point where he's weak in his body and he's, and he's feeble in his mind. And at that particular opportunity, oh my God, when his spirit man is not in control, then the devil would come to have an audience, not with the power of God, but with the flesh. So let me talk to the flesh side of Jesus because the only way he can talk to us is he has to find out first that we have a need. Oh, I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. And that's why we don't ever pay attention to the Bible when it says that, listen, there's a reason why the Lord spoke in his word and said, I shall
shall supply all of your need because if the devil catch you with a need, then the enemy makes an offer to you. When the enemy finds out that there's something in you that God has not satisfied, then he starts. He starts. He starts the great debate. And he says, he says, God, he says to, to Jesus, he said, I tell you what, he said, turn this stone into bread. He hungered. He hungered. He hungered. I'm going somewhere with this. He hungered. He hungered. And so rather, rather than for him to wait on God, Satan has a bread. Because what he wants to do, he wants Jesus to operate from a religious perspective. He wants Jesus to operate in magic. He wants to get him to do something that the father didn't tell him to do. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. Because I know that we are in the last days. Because there will be a lot of people singing. There will be a lot of people preaching. There will be a lot of people doing worship. I'm not giving y'all talk back to me. There will be a lot of people doing things. That God has not called you to do, but it has been the convenience of the enemy to get you to work for a God that you don't know. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Oh, y'all better say something in here because I know what the Holy Ghost has said. The enemy wanted him to, to, to move in your need outside of the plan of God. I'm talking, I'm talking. No, no, somebody, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Oh, I need to, I need to get a new church. Well, let me connect with the wrong person because I got a need. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Oh, somebody said I need a house. So let me connect with the wrong person. I'm not hearing y'all because of my need. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. He said, he said, he said, but wait. He said, I'm not. I'm not, that was, that was the offer. Mm. 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 That was the offer. And the answer was, man shall not live by bread alone. But can I paraphrase? Can I paraphrase it? Man will live if he get a word from God. Ooh, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody. I'm talking about I don't care what you're going through. Man shall live if you get a word from God. You shall survive if you get a word from God. I'm not giving y'all time. No, 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 no. What you're trying to do is you're trying to take my need and my hunger and make me depend upon something fleshly to survive. But what I'm trying to tell you, I don't have to eat bread, but I'll still live if I get a word from the Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by, but by, but by every word, every word, every word. See, I can't get nobody to really praise God right there because somebody ain't really got a lot of words from God by every word. That means in every situation, if I seek the Lord and he gives me a word, I don't have to see it with my eyes. I don't have to feel it. I'm not praising God because I feel it. I'm not praising God because I see it. I'm blessing God because I feel alive. Because I got a word from the Lord. The Lord, the Lord. Not the church, Lord. I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear nobody talk to me. I didn't hear nobody talk to me. Not the church, but the Lord. No, 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 come on here. Come on here, not the religious institution. What is a religious institution? It is an institution that tries to get God to join you instead of you joining God. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, Jesus. I, no, 
no, no, no, no, sit down, because I got to, sit down for a minute, because I got to, I got to do this. He said, he said, then the, then the second offer is made. Hmm. Hmm. Then the second offer is made. And the Bible says, and here we go. Here we go. This is where, this is, this is, this is, this is why the Father, this is why he sent me. I know why, I know why he sent me. He said, now here we go. He said, now if you, if you would cast yourself down and if you would worship me. He said, I will. Watch this, I will give you. Now this, now this is, now this is, now this is what the Lord said to me, how we have to, how we in the body of Christ, right along in here, right along in here, he said, right along, right along in here, right along in here, when we have become and learned how to become self-sufficient. Right along in here, right along in here, when we have become self-sufficient, right along in here, when we think we know what churches sound like and look like and move like, right along in here, when we systemize and we pattern what we think God is saying, and we do not take the restraints off of God to cause us to emerge ourselves in another dimension in here. It's right here where we have to be careful because this is when the enemy makes his greatest offer his greatest offer and he says now y'all think that this comes from God but watch this watch this he said he said all I will give you all of this power now God told me to walk through this God told me to walk through this tonight God told me to walk through this tonight now, I don't care if you don't shout. He said, he said, he said, he said, walk through this tonight. He said, because, because one of the reasons why when, 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 when Solomon got to praying in the temple and Solomon, the Bible said, he humbled himself and he began to pray. The Bible said when he took the sacrifices and he laid the sacrifices on the altar and all of the sacrifices was present. The Bible said that lightning came from heaven and God struck the sacrifices to the point that the glory of God filled the place until the priest couldn't even come into the temple. In other words, until the people that do the job of the temple couldn't come into the presence of the temple because the sacrifice was on the altar and God began to say, that's what's wrong with the body worldwide. There's a whole lot of stuff going on but the altar is empty. There is no sacrifice. Who am I? There was no sacrifice. I'm not, I'm not getting no back. There, there is no sacrifice. There is no sacrifice. Oh, there's praise, but there is no sacrifice. Oh, there's some kind of worship, but there was no sacrifice. I'm not here. It's not in order for us to throw ourselves down on the altar. It's not in order. Oh, no, 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 no. Because I'm an evangelist now. Because I'm a preacher now. Because, because the Lord uses me now. Because I'm the president of the women's department. Because, because this is my position. There is no sacrifice. And now we think that the sacrifice is for the baby saints that just came into the house of the Lord. But the Bible said that except the altar remains filled with the sacrifice, the power of God will never, we will have moments and spots of his, of the awareness that he has tried to come in, but he will not have a dwelling place. Now, now I want you, I want you to understand where, what I'm trying to say. See, I've, I, 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 I've really gone past. The Lord said to me, he said, the first 25 years of your ministry, he said, you were the people's prophet. He said, the next phase, you're my prophet. He said, so what I want you to do, the word that I'm bringing you now, you better not expect for everybody to jump up and shout. He said, because one thing about it, we want to hold on to our mess and still say we love God. But the Holy Ghost is saying that there is a move of God that's about to hit the church. Revival is here. To be on the altar from the pulpit to the back door. Wait, oh, no, 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 no
Don't, uh-uh, sit down, don't play for me, yeah. Don't, don't, uh-uh, don't play. Don't play. Jesus, Jesus, sit down. Have a seat for a second. Somebody said, well, why do you want him to play? Because the last two years I've been preaching with no music. Because God told me if the word don't quicken you, don't you die. Because it's going to be the same word that's going to call you out of the grave. If the Holy Ghost that you got is in B flat, you honey, you in a mess. If the way you praise God, you got to have an organ. You ain't got the real Holy Ghost. Because the real Holy Ghost, it'll work in your kitchen. It'll work in your basement. Who am I? myself too fast. I don't want to sit down for a second. I don't want to push my I don't want to push myself too fast. I don't want to push myself too fast. He said he said all of this power here we go. Here we go. Smart man. Very smart man. Very smart man. Very smart man. Because somebody said well it ain't time yet. The day you hear my voice. Not the day the whole church hear my voice. The day you hear my voice. Heart not your heart. And that's what's wrong with some of y'all. You wait on your friend to break up. You wait on your friend to surrender. You wait on your cousin to make a sacrifice. But I'm not giving you all talk to me. But there will come a time in your life where you will say, I will open up to him a sacrifice. That means I don't feel like it. But I'm I gotta carry my, I gotta carry my book with me. He said, in this Bible, he said, all this power, cause that's what, that's what people want now. They don't want no, they don't want no dip in God. They don't want their belly to know God. I'm saying stuff like this and some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. The Bible said there arose a generation that knew not the Lord. Let me walk up here. He said there arose a generation that didn't know how to praise God. There arose a generation that thought more about their makeup and their hairstyle than they did recognizing that when you in a divine moment from God, you can always go back and fix your hair. You can always go back and buy another outfit, but you can't miss the timing of God. Who am I talking about? And what I'm trying to tell you all tonight is there is about to be a moment that's getting ready to drop in this building, and you better not miss your time. He said, I'll give you just, 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 just touch somebody. Just, just touch somebody from me and said, don't miss your time. No, touch your, touch your neighbor. Wait a minute, before you touch anybody, if you touch somebody that's still fanning and somebody that's still looking cute, ignore them. Cause that's somebody right there. I'm not hearing y'all. That, oh, ha, ha. That's somebody right there. That's a religious demon. Huh? They want God to work with them. Huh? 
You better find somebody that's already got a praise going on. You better find somebody that you can feel and sense the power is already about to shift them in their belly. Somebody give God a shout. Because you got to you got to check. Y'all, y'all think I'm playing with this. But right now, for real, and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to be churchy because I done been to hell and back and I ain't got time for it. I'm saying right now, you better look at everybody around you. And if you standing near somebody that think they all that, you better step over a few feet because what I'm trying to tell you is that God getting ready to sweep in this place and he getting ready to take us back to our original selves. I'm talking about the you that used to praise God with everything you got. Wait. 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 He said, I'll give you all this power. That's why God called you great. He said, I'll give you all this power. Because people want power now. People want to be recognized now. You come in here and you take somebody who think they're some and don't give them a right seat and they'll walk out and go home and they'll call it disrespect. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I just wish I had somebody in here. But the Bible said that the reason why the children of Israel knew how to praise God because there was a tribe of Judah is because when David recognized that the Ark of the Covenant had been brought back and the glory had been returned, even though he was a king, the Bible said he did set up his clothes. He didn't tell the people to praise. He showed them how. He said, he said, let me just say this. Let me just say this. Satan said eight things. Because one thing the Lord showed me about Lucifer, because he used to live in heaven, he will always stick to, if he's ever going to be deceptive, he has to stick to the Bible principles. He has to use the same numerological system as God does because he knows that the people of God, because they're not baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit is about intricate details. So the enemy will make sure that when his deception comes, he rides in on the frame of truth. And so the enemy offers us eight things because he knows that eight means new beginnings. He knows that the number eight God has said, it means new beginnings. So what the devil tries to do, he tries tries to start you all over again and give you a new beginning in the wrong spirit. I'm talking to somebody right now. I wish I knew who I was preaching to in this building. I wish I knew somebody I was talking to. Yeah, he'll give you a new beginning, but it'll be a new beginning with the wrong spirit and in the wrong spirit and in the wrong timing. And you will be, wait a minute. Now this is, this is what I got while I was, while I was shutting in before I came here. He said, he said, he said eight things. He said, I give you power. I give you authority. And that's why when you see people and they extra bossy and they bossy without love and they don't know how to talk to people and they in positions of authority, but they rude and they nasty because it wasn't what God gave. It's what the enemy gave because there's something that is in them that's still not submitted to God. And so they have authority, but it's been given by Lucifer because there is no brokenness in their spirit. I wish I had some, my God, I wish I had, who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who I'm talking to. I've never seen so many mean and rude Christians. I've never seen so many people that are sweet and nice until you give them a position. Then all of a sudden they don't know how to talk to people. Then all of a sudden they talk like they the pastor. They act like they in authority because they got an authority but it did not come from God. How do I know that? Because is not with it. So then there 
was a there was a crossbreeding going on the Lord said there's a crossbreeding going on in the church and the pastor is trying to build from the he's trying to build from the pulpit while people are tearing down from the audience and so now you got two different congregations in the church and you keep wondering why every Sunday it seems like I gotta feel like I'm starting all over again I'm not giving y'all talk back to me because the Holy Ghost told me to prophesy that it's time for the changing of the guards because the Bible said that rod and thy staff shall comfort me which means the correction of the Lord and the staff that you have around you your staff the people that work around you pastors they supposed to comfort you and if they don't comfort you they are the wrong staff But it's not God. But it's not God. Churches are being built and it ain't God. No, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Bishops are being made, but it ain't God. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I wish somebody would come on here. I just wish, I, see the Lord allowed me to go through what I went through. He said, because when you come back, you ain't gonna owe nobody nothing. And you're gonna be able to say what I tell you to say. And I'm gonna say it again, bishops, and it ain't God. Uh, pastors, uh, they need to be sitting down under somebody and learning how to be broken. But what we're doing is, uh, we holding seminars uh, and teaching pastors uh, how to erect the business of the church. But ain't nobody teaching you how to build your heart for God. Ain't nobody teaching brokenness. Ain't nobody teaching prayer. Who am I talking to? The church don't need the business. The church needs the glory of God. So now the church so now the church is a corporation it's a corporation instead of an establishment for miracles Hoshana the church is a business it's no longer a prayer tower it's no longer a place where people can come and lay prostrate on the altar it's no longer for prostitutes and drug addicts I'm not giving your talk back to me I wish I had somebody to talk to me you got to look a certain way you got to wear a certain outfit you got to be in a certain class but I hear the Lord saying the Samaritans are coming up. I hear the Lord saying they're not going to look like you. They're not going to dress like you. But I'm going to take them because of their brokenness. Sit down. Say, hold on, Shay. Hold on, Shay. Shay, I see you. You got, you got people in here right now. You got people in here right now. Half scared to praise God. Because of what somebody going to say. You got people in here right now. That want to take a run around the church. That, that's what I'm talking about. Because that's the kind of church I come from. I came from a church. Uh, that when the power of God fell. Uh, the men took off their jackets. They took off their ties. She came in here in a wheelchair, and now she running. I, I don't hear nobody talking to me. You better give God a praise, because I'm telling you right now, the power is dropping in this place. You better get free. Somebody give him a shout. See, 
y'all see? And y'all see what we done turned into? Y'all see what we done turned into? Y'all see what we done turned into? When people start running, we start looking at them. That's what we done turned into. When it used to be, when somebody took off running, that was an indication that the presence is in the building and I can get whatever I want. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. You missing your moment, being a stalker. You missing your moment, looking around at somebody else. You better reach for yourself. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, let me finish this. Because I'm going to tell you something. He said, Pastor, Pastor Moore, he said, Authority, I'm going to give them one power, two, authority, three, their glory. Their glory. They, you can't have saying nothing. And if we don't say we thank the Lord for you, then you mad, your glory. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. We ask you to get up and, and, and make the announcement. And, and, and Lord, if we don't say we thank Sister Watkins for the announcement, your glory. But see, God is looking for somebody that don't care who gets the glory. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I hear the Lord saying, I'll get the glory. If you don't mind, if you don't get it. I'm not hearing nobody talk. See, all of us is in God's way. But God said, when we really get to a point that we want him to get the glory, we will ask God to make us disappear. We will tell God, when I take the microphone, don't let the people see me, but let them see you. Don't let them hear me, but let them hear you. Don't let them be blessed by me, but let them be blessed by who am I preaching to? I'm, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something in a minute. He said, he said, all their glory, their magnificence, their excellence, their preeminence, their dignity, and their grace. So this chief of a spirit that have come now from the pit of hell, it knows how to conduct itself with glory, with grace, with excellence, with authority. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all ain't saying that. That's why you can't tell that it ain't God. I'm not hearing y'all because it comes in the spirit of excellence. I'm not hearing y'all. It comes with grace. I'm not hearing y'all. It walks in confidence and authority. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. It has preeminence, which means it knows how to prophesy. It can discern some things. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. But if you keep on looking at the spirit, what you won't see is brokenness. What you won't see is humility. What you won't see is a prayer life. What you won't see is a fast life. Because when you fast, it peels back the flesh. When you fast, it exposes who you are. I'm not hearing. Wait, 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 we may not. Can I, can I just have five minutes? Five minutes, Pastor. Can I have five minutes? So, 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 the Bible said, this, this demon, man of God, Lucifer himself, he stands before Jesus and he says, if you, he, the Bible said he showed him a glance of all the kingdoms. Because when people are after power and the devil show you what you can have in the system of the church, you will sell your soul to the devil to have it. Man of God, did I just say something? Did I just say something? 
Did I just say something? Yeah. And so, and so, and so the reason why, the reason why so many people are being deceived because we're talented, because, because we're talented and we got gifts and what the devil does, he shows you a flash of what you can have in the system of the church. I'm not hearing y'all, I'm not hearing y'all, but somebody tonight is going to pass up the offer and say, I don't want what's in the system. I want what's in the heart of God. system. I want what's in the heart of God. Somebody say, how did Jesus, how did Jesus refuse that offer? How did he? Hey, my son. Hey, my son. How did he refuse the offer? Come on, man. The Lord showed me this. He said, because Juanita, Jesus, 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 the word is eternal. So when eternity gets hungry, the flesh can't feed it. When, when the hunger is coming from the eternal spirit, I'm, I'm hungry for some cake and I'm hungry for some pizza. Eternity. Eternity in me is hungry. And eternity in me is calling me to eternity. And eternity in me is calling me to operate in the things of the eternal. Eternity in me is causing me to preach from the eternal place. Eternity in me is causing me to pray from the eternal position. Eternity in me is calling me to leave the posture of the earth realm of intercession. Eternity in me is calling me to take up a wailing. Eternity in me is calling me to travail. Eternity in me is crying from the throne of God, waking up the belly of the church. Jesus said. What you just showed me. I'm the word. Watch this. I'm Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. Watch this. The book of Hebrews said, I'm the author and the finisher of our faith. The Message Bible and the Amplified Bible said, I initiated what you believe. You didn't have a belief system until I gave you one. 
And then Hebrews said, and if it's ever going to mature and be made manifest, I'm going to be the person that's going to mature it and bring it into manifestation. Who's listening to what God is saying tonight? Lift your hands up because I want to know if I'm preaching to a church that's, that's about to tap the kingdom of God. I know something is dropping in the city of Dallas. I know that something is dropping in Texas and it is prophetic and I'm going to prophesy in just a few minutes and let you know what God gave me while I was in the shut-in. I, I left the church from the shut-in and I didn't leave out of my office only to go to the bathroom and come back. And on my way here, I left out of the shut-in going straight to the plane. I'm going to tell you what God told me that is about to happen in the state of Texas. He said to me, he said when Jesus, when he looked at the offer of Satan, the reason why he was able to deny it, the reason why man of God, he was able to refuse it, because what he was saying to Satan, I'm going to the pit of hell. I'm after eternity. I want eternal life. I want to be there to catch him when you get through deceiving him. I'm going to the pit of hell. I don't want the earthly kingdom. I want the keys to death, hell, and the grave. What I'm after is not in the earth realm. What I'm after is an eternal position in heaven and in earth and in the pit of hell. So I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't, I don't want, I don't, I don't want that. When I was in my pastor's office, and I would go to the bathroom in his office, and he had this lantern on his desk. Oh, about shy. And I would be on my way to the bathroom, and I would, his lantern would be on his desk. And it has oil in it. He 80 some years old and a mighty prayer warrior. And, he, and I would walk through there going to the bathroom. And now, see, I want to tell you, I didn't go and I had been, and I speak this humbly, the Lord had sent me 40 days and 40 nights. And he said, I want you to go with liquids because I'm getting ready to transform you. And I was finished with the consecration. And my pastor said to me, God said, come to New York and shut in your office for three days. I'm 52 years old. I just got finished consecrating for 40 days. I told my sister and them said, do, do you feel it? I said, I don't feel it. They said, well, do you sense it? I said, I don't sense it. But I'm obedient. And I got my stuff, man of God. And I went in that office and I was sitting on the couch the first night. And I didn't feel nothing. But the man of God said, do it. What am I saying? A lot of stuff that's getting ready to happen for... Yes, Lord. The Lord said 77% of the people in this building. A lot of things that's getting ready to happen to you. It's going to happen to you because you're going to have a man of God and a woman of God that's going to tell you something to do that God said and no matter if you feel it or not. Because the Bible said, the Bible didn't say that Ruth knew God. The Bible didn't say that she knew God. The Bible said she knew somebody that knew God. Ruth walked in wealth. She walked in a divine position because she told Naomi, your God is going to be my God. And what's wrong with the church? 
is that we bastards and we raising ourselves. What's wrong with the church has become the church by permission, but our spirit is not under the leadership of the power of God, of the house of God. What's wrong with us? We act like we're doing somebody a favor by walking in the house of God, but God told me that a season is coming up, that if your pastor say, we all go spend the night up, you better find yourself in the house of God, because I hear the Lord saying that, y'all ain't hearing this, the deceiver is on the prowl, Satan is looking, he's looking for who he can devour, you better get under the covering. No. So I so I sat there in the office. And by early that next morning, I got up to use the bathroom and I walked through the office and got some of that oil. I touched it, I said, that looked like oil. I put it on my face and my hands and I went on back into the office and by the time I got back there, the power of God hit me. And I said, my God, I said, Jesus, I had a, I had a divine moment in the last, yesterday, hey, shall ya. I was sitting in my office in the glory of God, same thing, I went to the bathroom and I anointed myself and the glory of God fell. And it was just like the day of Pentecost, that's all I can describe it. I was in there worshiping God and weeping before God. And I didn't even have the music on it. When I looked up, my pastor was standing in my office. And when I looked up, it was like, I didn't see him. It was like looking at Jesus and I came, I came to him like a child. And I laid my head on his chest and he began to speak in tongues and he began to pray for me. And he began to say, because you obeyed God. He said, eyes haven't seen, no ears have heard. What am I saying? I'm saying that God is saying for the state of Texas. See, this is where oil come from. And what's wrong with the church out here is y'all used to the people watching the people with the machines manufacture the oil and the machines keep trying to dig the oil up and so it's being done mechanical and so the church done turn mechanical but God said if y'all gonna get the oil out of the depths of the Holy Ghost it can't be mechanical it's gonna cost you your life I'm not giving y'all talk back to me it's gonna cost somebody that's willing to open up your mouth and come after God with everything that you got Somebody, somebody said, what you looking for? I'm looking for the glory. I'm looking for the glory carries. I see, a, I see some church people, but I'm looking for the glory carries. I see some people, I see some people. I see some people that look like they trying to praise God, but, but I don't think people know who the glory carriers is. The glory carriers, somebody said, well, well, I've been travailing, but God revealed to me during those 40 days that travail is not an act. Travail is not something that you do when you get in prayer. Travail is a trial. It's something that you walk through. And the Bible said that when you're walking through a trial and you're not begging God to get you out, when you open your mouth in prayer and you begin to howl out, your howl is connected with your pain and therefore you are birthing something out. I'm not giving nobody. 
and the glory of God cannot be revealed until there's a crushing of the olive. So I'm looking for the glory carriers. I'm looking for the people that said forgot how to praise God like the church and will give God a radical praise because, wait a minute, not because I'm free, but because I'm still going through it, but because I'm still there, but because of my travail, I give God glory because I'm birthing something. Who am I preaching? I wish I had somebody in here. I'm looking for the I'm looking for the howlers I'm looking for the howlers I'm looking for the howlers I'm looking for the growlers I'm, I'm not giving y'all I'm looking for the people that know that if I start hollering he gonna work it out I'm looking for the people that know that if I open up my mouth and if I give God a praise It's all right. That's what I'm talking about. It's all right. It's all right. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Y'all see what I'm talking about? Y'all see what I'm talking about? I'm talking about people that need to come on through. Transference of spirit. Yes, Shia. You gotta move your 
see from somebody that's dead. Sound. And the Holy Ghost said, for the next 60 seconds, 